Howdy again folks, and today I get to check out something kind of neat, the first autofocus lens for Fuji cameras from Chinese manufacturer TT Artisan, their AF 27mm f2.8. It's currently only for Fuji X mount cameras and will have a bargain price of 160 US dollars or 160 pounds here in the UK. I would like to thank the Pergear company for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation, although as usual this is a totally independent review, checking out both its strengths and weaknesses. On the APS-C sized sensor of a Fuji X mount camera, this thing's 27mm focal length is the full frame equivalent of about 41mm, making it kind of a perfect standard lens, not too wide and not too telephoto, giving you just a little emphasis on your subject while still giving you the bigger picture. And the key selling point of this lens is obviously its tiny little pancake size, but I can also confirm that it's very lightweight, weighing less than 100 grams, you will barely notice it on your camera in use, despite the fact that a lot of its body is made of metal, including the rear mount, which is not weather sealed by the way. The lens's rear cap is pretty unique in that it has electronic connections built in, along with a USB-C port for firmware upgrades, which is a really clever little solution to not having enough room on the lens itself for a USB port. Despite its low cost, the lens does indeed feature an aperture ring, which clicks every third of an f-stop. I have to say though that it is a little thin, a bit fiddly to use, but then again, what else would you expect from an aperture ring on a pancake lens? In front of that comes a manual focus ring, which turns reasonably smoothly and works pretty well with the lens's focus motor. The lens does display some focus breathing here, zooming in as you focus more closely to your subject. The lens's autofocus motor works fairly quickly, it emits a very quiet whirring sound as it goes, and when I was shooting at f2.8 it would sometimes miss focus just a little, although stopping down to f4 seemed to solve that problem. Considering the lens's low price though, this is about as good a performance as you can expect. The lens does not feature image stabilization, it comes with a tiny little metal lens hood, and a cleverly designed front lens cap which will clip onto the lens whether the hood is in place or not. Overall, the lens's functionality is perfectly fine, its autofocus isn't the best I've ever seen, but there are a couple of clever ideas in its design which make it somewhat stand out from the low budget crowd. Alright, let's take a look at image quality. I happened to be borrowing a Fuji X-H2 camera at the time of making this review, and its 40 megapixel sensor should offer a serious challenge to this little 27mm lens. Fuji's automatic in-camera corrections are turned on here. At f2.8, in the middle of the image, we see low contrast, and the image is a little soft. Interestingly, the corner image quality, while dark, is much better, very sharp with good contrast. I know it sounds weird for the corners to be sharper than the middle, but this does happen from time to time, perhaps in the case of about 5 lenses I've tested out of 500 or so so far. The lens was properly focused on the middle of the test chart, I can assure you. Anyway, stop down to f4 for the same excellent image in the corners, but now with just a touch more brightness and contrast. The good news is that, back in the middle, the image quality has jumped right up to being brilliantly sharp. Stop down to f5.6 for even a touch more sharpness and contrast in the middle. The lens stays this sharp down to about f8, where a little over sharpening can be seen from the camera's automatic diffraction compensation. At f11 and f16, the camera's automatic sharpening is going into overdrive and the image doesn't look so good anymore. Overall though, at f2.8, we really did need to see a bit more sharpness and a lot more contrast in the middle of your images, which is generally where the subject of your photography is going to be, but the good news is that stopping down just at f4 brings about a huge improvement and excellent picture quality, so you should definitely bear that in mind, even if you're shooting on a 24 or 26 megapixel camera. Alright, let's take a look at the lens's distortion and vignetting by bypassing the camera's automatic corrections and shooting in RAW. The lens is projecting some moderate barrel distortion here, frankly I've seen much worse than this before though. The corners are very dark. Stopping down to f4 or f5.6 does bring about a little extra brightness in those image corners, but the vignetting never really goes away completely and you'll definitely want to correct it when shooting in RAW. The lens can focus down to about 35cm, not really very close for a wide angle lens. 
At f2.8, close-up image quality shows even less contrast than at normal distances, with a pretty washed-out resulting image. However, as before, stop down just to f4 for a huge improvement in contrast, and at f5.6 we see just a little extra sharpness too. Let's see how the lens performs against bright light. At f2.8, the answer is not well at all. Flaring isn't too bad, but the glaring is dreadful. Stop the lens down to f4, as I do here, for a lot more contrast to emerge. Finally, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. It should be pretty clear by now that shooting at f2.8 is not a great idea with this optic, but if you do, then get close enough to your subject for some bokeh that actually looks lovely and smooth. I didn't really notice any bokeh issues with this particular lens. Overall, well, in terms of build quality, the lens is pretty alright for the money you're paying here. In terms of image quality, as you've seen, there are some clear issues when shooting at f2.8, but there's no denying that actually, if you stop down just at f4, the lens offers excellent sharpness and picture quality all around, so if you're willing to do that, then it's actually a decent enough option for its price. Let me tell you a bit of a secret, I find it really interesting when manufacturers start branching out and adding new features like autofocus to their lenses, because I like to see how well they do or don't work, it's a nice little extra challenge for me. What's not a challenge for me though, is putting extra bonus content onto my Patreon page. Supporters over there are making a big difference to keeping this channel going, and I love to reward them with all kinds of bonus content, videos and advanced previews. Check it out down in the description below, and ciao for now, everybody!